Hello, good evening, and thanks for your time. This is News at 10 on TV3 and on 3FM 92.7. The bulletin is live from our news hub here at Adisawi, Kanda, in Accra. I am Stephen Enti, and remember you can send your comments to our various social media pages on Twitter at News on TV3 and on Facebook, News on TV3. Let's start with the day's news highlights. The Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, has cautioned government not to extend the coverage of the free senior high school to private schools, but rather expand the existing infrastructure in public schools to accommodate all qualified applicants. The General Secretary of NAT, David Ofori Echampong, was reacting to concerns raised by the Conference of Heads of Private Second Cycle Schools in Accra. On the magistrate presiding over the suspected killers of the former MP for Ibuakwa North, J.B. Dankwa Edu Erit in Semo has expressed unhappiness about the frequent pleading for extension of time by the prosecutor. He has charged the prosecutor to get the docket from the Attorney General for her as soon as possible. And the 12 labor unions have given government two weeks to transfer their 80 months arrears on the second tier pension scheme to their fund custodians or risk a nationwide indefinite strike. At a news conference in Accra, leadership of the unions argued any further delay could affect the benefits of retirees from next year. And three heads of senior high schools have been interdicted for breaching placement guidelines. Seven others are under investigations. This follows a crunch meeting between the Ghana Education Service and 19 heads of senior high schools who have been accused of collecting illegal fees. And the Commissioner of the National Insurance Commission, Justice Yao Ofori, has hinted of plans to increase minimum requirements of insurance companies by 100%. The current minimum requirement is pegged at 150 million CDs. So those were our major news highlights. Remember, we're streaming live on our Facebook page and you can hear us on 3FM 92.7. Up next is the big one. Welcome back. Now, heads of two senior high schools have been demoted and transferred to teach in other schools for flouting the free SHS implementation guidelines. Nine others have also been interdicted pending further investigations. The nine were among 19 heads of senior high schools who were invited by the Ghana Education Service on allegations of charging illegal fees. The Director General of the Ghana Education Service is Professor Kwesi Opukwa Mankwa. After our deliberations with them, we realized that they had infractions against the implementation guideline that has been given to them. As far back as 21st August, We had given out guidelines on the implementation of the free SHS. So 
no one in there as a headmaster, headmistress, has any good reason to say that he or she doesn't have the guidelines. He said some school heads disregarded the rules. We've gone through the lists and we realized that some of them, or most of them, have no basis for the complaints that they are making. And I'll give you one typical example. Agri Memorial Zion in Cape Coast. Thousand students left the school. Thousand left the school. You are not requesting half of that thousand, but there is congestion. We are inviting him tomorrow to come and explain. Professor Mankwa said the GES had identified the challenges in the school placement and has provided solutions. A total of 42,409 had qualified for the free SHS program and 39,978 had also been placed as of September 13th. And two headmasters have been sacked after charging unapproved fees following uh, government's rollout of the free senior high school uh, policy. The headmaster of uh, Pentecost SHS in the uh, eastern region, Mr. Wisdom Blazu, an assistant headmaster of Darfur Senior High School, Reverend S.P. Alewoko, were relieved of their posts by the Ghana Education Service. Uh, the Darfur headmaster, uh, S.C.K. Agbeko, is to be reprimanded for poor supervision. A, a total of nine others were interdicted, uh, Director General of the Ghana Education has said. The headmistress of Quinyaku, SHS, Mrs. Florence Pra, Ahantamai, SHS, headmistress, Mrs. Mercy Oklu, Ekunfi Amiyao, SHS, Techimai uh, Julian Okong and his assistant and uh, Jacob Bazon and George Frimpong Kwating, headmaster of Asesawa SHS, Christian Atram La Presbyterian SHS in the Greater Accra region, Samuel Salamat, who refused to attend uh, GES investigations into the allegations. Right, uh, we were scheduled originally to speak with Bright Apia, who is the chairman of the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition, but we're not able to uh, raise him on the telephone lines. We'll keep trying, and then uh, when we do, we will get him on and we'll continue with that conversation. Meanwhile, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, has cautioned government not to extend coverage of the free SHS policy to private schools, but rather expand the existing infrastructure in public schools to accommodate or qualified applicants. The General Secretary of NAT, David Ofurie Champong, was reacting to concerns raised by the Conference of Heads of Private Second Cycle Schools in Accra. The Conference of Heads of Private Second Cycle Schools, at a media briefing, called on government to expand the coverage of the free SHS policy to include private schools to save them from possible collapse. But the General Secretary of NAT, David Ofere Champon, disagrees. The state has not denied the opportunity of going to a public school. The opportunity has been given to you, one, to pass your examination and pass well. Select a school that your, your capacity can take you to. Two, if you are not successful at the first attempt, there's an opportunity for you to rewrite your paper and still come back onto the system. But if you think that your parents have resources to go to a private school, nobody stops you. But the point is that we cannot, at this material time, spend money on our students going to private schools. 
if in the, somewhere in the future, fine, but not presently. The association lauded government for the bold decision in rolling out the policy, but expressed worry that government has failed to notify various institutions whether they should charge PTA levies or not. But the Ministry of Education has warned that health of institutions should not deprive students for not paying PTA levies. The General Secretary is of the view parents should pay PTA levies despite the program being free. There are some schools that they went to purchase buses on high purchase and they are paying off from PTA contributions to the schools. Now people are saying that the first years are not supposed to pay PTA fees. Does it then imply that if the first years will have to undertake a, a journey somewhere, they should be deprived from using the school vehicle? He was emphatic the payment of the PTA levies by parents could facilitate the expansion of facilities in the various schools. Let's take a school like uh, Manfi. I mean, just hypothetically, they are putting up a project, PTA project. They are building a school block because they want to expand the facilities. The state doesn't have the resources to do so now. So they decide to make a contribution. So every student who goes to Manfi pays a certain amount of money. Are we saying that the Form 1 students who are coming are not bound by the decision of the parents of Manfi Senior High School? This is still News at 10. We're live from the News Hub at Adesawa and you can hear us on 3FM 92.7. We're streaming live on our Facebook page. We have more news for you. Please don't go away. Welcome. Uh, this is still on news at 10. The regional secretaries of, for the People's National Convention, PNC, have described a standing committee meeting held by the party during the weekend as a recipe for fragmented uh, PNC. They say the leader of the party, Dr. Edward Mahama, has been contemptuous, disregarding the constitution in all his dealings. The latest uh, illustration of such disregard, they say, uh, when done without recourse to Article 46, excluded regional secretaries and other members from standing committee meeting uh, the, they called during the past week. And the regional uh, secretaries claimed non-members of the standing committee were rather invited to attend the said meeting, which they find unacceptable and should not be tolerated. They say the meeting was not properly constituted and therefore could not be said to have the power of the standing committee. Right, uh, we're having a studio tonight, uh, Siba Salifu Shakibo, who is a Greater Accra Regional Secretary of the PNC. Good evening, sir. Thank you uh, for joining us. How are you? So you are saying that the standing committee uh, that met over the weekend has no power as a standing committee. Can you tell us why? Yes, uh, it's simple and clear. It has no power in the sense that uh, there are certain officers within the party that constitute the standing committee members. Mm. So uh, that is enshrined in the party's constitution. Okay. Uh, in the uh, exclusion of any of these members. And that's the constitution you have? Yes, that's the constitution that mm. uh, uh, in front of me right now. In the exclusion of any of these members for any standing committee meeting, that meeting is said to be null and void. And are there, are there clauses that make it possible for, for example, an emergency standing committee meeting? If it is emergency standing committee meeting, then it should have rather be a neck meeting. Because for whatever issues coming to be discussed in the uh, standing committee meeting, if it's, it's a recipe from what has been suggested at the neck meeting for implementation. So it comes down to the standing committee meeting to see the way forward in implementing such suggestions. So how many uh, officers in general were excluded in this, in this meeting? And have you been able to find out the reasons why they were excluded? Well, if regional secretaries were excluded from the meeting, we were not to give the party the reason why we were excluded. I mean, have they given you? Yes, they, they did not give us any reason why the regional secretaries mm. were excluded. 
So we are very disturbed and worried about that because this is our legitimate right, which we have to take it, you know, by ourselves in order to push the party's agenda forward. We are the uh, executives, I mean, we are the administrators of the region. And our constituencies and uh, polling stations executives are looking mm -hmm. upon us to get the necessary information required by the party which will aid them to exercise their duties in marshalling uh, votes for the party when it comes mm. to the general uh, Tell me, what exactly do you want? Yeah, we want the leadership of the party, in particular Dr. Edward Nasigri Mahama, who is the leader now and the 2016 flag bearer, to reconsider his decision in his dealings with the party matters. Because if as a veteran politician, will put the constitution aside and work upon what he deemed necessary. I don't think uh, is 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 in the direct in the, in the right direction. Mm. So we are calling upon the party leadership to do away completely with the decision that recent uh, uh, standing committee meeting came out with. Okay, so tell me what, what, what decision was arrived at? I'm looking at uh, weighing the decision that was arrived at, uh, seeing the enormity of it against the constitution. Yes, the irrespective of the, 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 the seriousness, the, the seriousness of, of, of the, the meeting, irrespective of the values of the issues being discussed at the meeting. The since, yes, since it was done in the wrong way, we can't go by it. It is very important that we have to come back Okay, and follow the right procedure for the right thing to be achieved. But any right thing that is achieved by following the wrong procedure hmm. will definitely be nullified. But we, we also receive an information that uh, some of your regional secretaries are not aware that you have issued this statement uh, without their knowledge. So issuing a statement without their knowledge, does it not make it invalid? This statement uh, did not come to our notice because all the 10 regional uh, secretaries sat down. We sat down and then discussed this matter thoroughly within us. And mm -hmm. we came to the conclusion that, yes, it is important to let the party members nationwide to get to know what is actually happening within the party because the elimination of uh, regional secretaries at the standing committee meeting has a very serious consequences to the way forward of the party in the, in, the, in, the, in the whole country. Interesting. I know that you were not willing to tell me what was discussed in that standing committee meeting because you say it took, it took place in, in an illegal way, right? So you don't want to recognize it. But we have picked up information that the meeting over the weekend proposed restructuring of the party uh, to position it well for the next election. This is good. You should be happy about that. There's no doubt about it. It is good. Even as I told you, for any standing committee meeting to be held whatever issues that has to be discussed at that standing committee meeting should be a recipe from the next meeting yes we held a next meeting some few weeks ago and we all came into agreement that yes there's the need for the party to draw the necessary agenda that will be carried forward against 2020 elections and therefore certain committees are needed to be formed in order to articulate that agenda to a successful end. Yes, so this initiated or this uh, uh, brought the, the idea of calling for standing committee meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, whilst we were at the NEC meeting being regional secretaries, we anticipated that uh, calling for a standing committee meeting, we should get a first-hand information of invite so that we can come because after the next meeting, we all went down and have discussions with our uh, party members within the regions constituency executives, police station executives, and we gathered the necessary information that we, can, or we, we want to bring it at the standing committee meeting to share with all other members and see how we can mobilize mm -hmm. our human resources in the attainment of the party's objectives. But with the elimination of uh, or exclusion of the party regional secretaries at the standing committee meeting, there were a lot that were missing which should have been Included. brought exactly mm. or uh, introduced at the meeting for the, the, the way forward. So what's, go what's going to be your next step from, yes. from this stage? Uh, from this stage, we are going to meet again 
as regional executives and then see whether the party leadership will respond to our plea in order to address this issue. Then if that is, did not happen, well, oh, we'll get to cross the river when you get to <laughs> to the bank. Right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for pleasure. your time. Uh, we've been speaking to the Greater Accra Regional Secretary of the PNC. This is still uh, news at 10. Now, the 12 labor unions have given government two weeks to transfer uh, their 80 months arrears on the second tier pension scheme to their custodians or risk a nationwide strike. At a news conference in Accra, leadership of the unions argued any further delays could affect the benefits of retirees from next year. The 12 labor unions called the forum noted government is yet to pay their 18 months arrears on the second tier since 2010. Under the second tier, contributors benefit which could not otherwise have been invested would affect retirees. Currently, about 2.5 billion cities of the amount is lodged at the temporary pensions fund account at the Bank of Ghana yet to be transferred. More than 1.2 billion interest has also been accrued on the amount. Out of the figure, more than 500 million cities has been transferred to the private fund managers for private institutions. But leadership of the 12 labor unions insists that government has to pay its outstanding arrears within two weeks or risks a strike. Isaac Bampuado is the chairman for the forum. The delay in the transfer of the accumulated funds lodged at the TPFE and earnings will not be further tolerated. Thus, by this press conference, we are serving notice that if by 29th September 2017 the transfer to the custodians of the four public sector schemes are not affected, the forum will declare an indefinite strike action. The unions alleged 2.5 billion cities purported to be in the pensions fund accounts cannot be traced. However, Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, David Abbey, disagrees. We have successfully transferred an amount of 555 million belonging to 258,422 employees under 8,116 employers for private sector workers and public sector workers who do not draw their salaries from controller and accountant. This angered the chairman of the 12 labor unions who challenged the NPRA to immediately transfer the funds. 90 days after the schemes have been registered, your NPRA is supposed to transfer this money to the schemes. So I'll plead with you to ask NPRA this question. If the monies are there, why are they flouting the act? Because it's clear that 90 days after the schemes have been registered and licensed, MPI transfer those monies. Meanwhile, the unions have once again insisted on conducting an independent audit into the TPFA at the Bank of Ghana. And the magistrates are presiding over the suspected killers of the former MP for Ibuakwa North, J.B. Dankwa Edu uh, Erit in Semo, has expressed unhappiness about the frequent pleading for extension of time by the prosecutor. He has charged the prosecutor to get the docket from the Attorney General for her as soon as possible. After three hours of waiting for the investigator to appear in court with the suspects, the prosecutor, DSP George Amega, pleaded with the magistrates to again give him enough time to get a docket of the case from the Attorney General. The magistrate Erin Simon was not pleased with the frequent pleading for extension of time and charged him to get the docket to the court as soon as possible. She says the court will not entertain the frequent adjournment of the case since it has been pending for some time now. The Deputy General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party and a legal practitioner who appeared in court said he was watching brief and was in court to protect the interests of the deceased. He told the court he will engage the Attorney General to fast track the legal advice for the case to commence. Once I'm watching brief, I have the right to write to the AG's office to know of the position of the case and perhaps to urge them that they should expedite action. 
The former Ibuakwa North MP was stabbed to death on the dawn of February 9, 2016 at his Shiashi residence in Accra. Two days after his murder, the Accra Regional Police Command led an operation to arrest Daniel Sidu. Vincent Bosu was also later arrested and charged with conspiracy. And a damaged and weak electricity high tension pole has been left unattended to, posing danger to lives and property at Ikropong in the eastern region. Uh, residents there say a minor accident long ago caused cracks in the concrete high tension pole at the junction to the Kwepimai Senior High School, but has been abandoned. The tilted high-tension concrete electricity pole here at the Okwapeman Senior High School caught our attention mid-morning Wednesday, September 13. A cursory look revealed cracks at the base. But the cracks are deep exposing corroded iron bars. Residents recalled a road traffic accident sometime last year resulted in the damage. They explained a vehicle in a bid to avoid a portal lost control and slammed into the pole. According to the residents, the attention of the electricity company has been drawn to the damage, but no action has been taken. Occupant of this makeshift shop records seeing some workers of the ECG at the site, but cannot explain exactly what they had done. He feared the damage pole could fall and appealed to the authorities to take steps to replace it to avert possible disaster. And that's how we end news at 10. Thank you very much for making time. For those who left your dial on 3 from 92.7, thank you very much. On behalf of the crew, good night. There is more news at 3news.com.